Welcome and God bless you, everyone on the broadcast, everyone here. Thank you so much for joining me on a rainy Tuesday, this, uh, January 9th, 2018. Um, the roads are flooded, the trees and the leaves are all over the road, and it's dangerous getting here. So, anyways, I'm grateful that you're here and you're with us on the broadcast. We're going to light the candle and go right into our meditation. Okay. Lord God Almighty, we celebrate this day we celebrate our lives, we celebrate the lives of our friends, our, all of our spiritual teachers and guides. We celebrate the angels. We celebrate the light and the Holy Spirit. Come now, O blessed Holy Spirit. Quicken in fire our hearts Illumine our minds. Show us the glory of the Father, Mother, God, that we may move in time and space with thy holy presence in, through, and around us, touching and blessing every person that we meet touching and blessing the planet, Mother Earth, the sky, the trees, the grass, everything we see, we love and bless with thy holy energy, with thy joy and wonder of the beauty of this creation. Thank you again. So being the ninth, almost the completion of our numbers, in a lot of ways it's the completion of our lives and what that means to us individually, our purpose for coming to earth. Have we? come and finished what we've come to do? Have we transferred our love and our wisdom into the people that we're supposed to, that will carry on this message of God's love, God's wisdom, and the higher understanding of the masters and the angels. Life asks us a question. Have we used our time wisely? El Moria asks us this question. Tempest Fugit. So during this meditation, as we walk the ladder of light to the throne of God, and we look at him in the eyes, 
in the blazing light of the sun, let us download what we need to do to accomplish for the greatest good, for the greatest joy, for the highest blessing. of our family, our friends, we must transfer our knowledge, our joy to everyone we meet. So that when we leave, we can go higher into the light, higher into the sun, behind the sun, and be at peace and know that we have done our very best.
thank you for your absolute stillness. Thank you for your beautiful dedication to the light, to the practice of meditation. So, remain there. And I want you to listen to the words of these, of this master, of this ascended master we lovingly call Lanello, Mark Prophet, the founder of the Summit Lighthouse. In this short talk, and follow his Buddhic wisdom as he expounds on some cosmic truth. My discourse today to the Keepers of the Flame from the personal level with the invitation to my Divine Presence to speak is based on the subject of transition or what mankind calls death. Inasmuch as we are all celebrating the Feast of the Resurrection, it is altogether fitting and proper that the mysteries of life, which seem to have their terminus in death, should be pondered and considered by us here and now. I think that re-embodiment or the transition of the soul from one human consciousness into a flesh form again as a little child is clearly recognized by us and I do not intend to go into re-embodiment as such today. I am concerned however with speaking to some degree on the transition of man from the human level because it is an experience which we all have passed through again and again and again even as we have passed through the birth process again and again. There is no need to fear death because it is a natural phenomena and we must understand that it is no more difficult unless we make it so than simply going to sleep at night. In fact, you die quicker than you go to sleep. It's just one last breath and the loss of consciousness and the soft velvety darkness that seems to surround you for one moment and there's no more consciousness. But transition is not always quite that way. Uh, sometimes when people pass, and this is true primarily of many of the masters and advanced souls, they pass out of the body with as great an ease as you could possibly imagine. And they find that they are in the room, are able to clearly see every object in the room as with their physical eyes. They see the people, they hear what the people are saying, and they see their own body laying there, inert and immovable, while they, as though from a position above the body, higher in the room, are gazing down upon it. This is one form of passing. This is a very easy form of passing, you say. But, of course, it is not quite so easy for individuals who experience it this way and don't know they're dead. 
Because when they do not know that they have passed through, they have the idea that they're in a dream of some kind and they try to wake up. Sometimes they go over to living people and they shake them on the shoulder or they holler in their ears. And it's very disconcerting to them because the people do not answer them, of course. And you know, sometimes if they shake hard enough, the people get a little disturbed and they begin to look around and they, they wonder just what in the world is going on. Now, I am particularly concerned with accidents because accidents are very unusual things. They are not intended to happen. Otherwise, they wouldn't be accidents. And, of course, a lot of people might disagree. They'd say, well, they all function by law and you must have deserved it to have an accident. Perhaps. That's another subject. We'll leave that alone for now. I am concerned with accidents because of the rapidity, almost like a jet, with which the soul is precipitated out of the body into the uh, astral realm and so forth. At that time, individuals really do not know what happened to them and many times there is very little loss of consciousness in accident. I remember one time, several years ago, that on a Sunday afternoon I was driving around Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, as I went out into the country, I met a car coming very fast around the corner. And he was on my side of the road, heading straight for me. Seven feet in front of my car, he veered. Had he not veered, I probably would not be here. Because we would have hit head on, and he was doing 70 miles an hour, or more, I suspect 80. He veered, lost control, went into the ditch, bounced up on a rock, went 700 feet in a plowed field, and then swung around with four tires blown out. I came up and found a woman who was sitting beside the driver with her teeth all knocked out, and uh, a group of children all covered with blood and crying and running around the car, and two men there who were drunk, one who was the driver and the other who was in the back seat. Now this is the scene when I came upon it that so amazed me. One young man, the driver, was running around with his hands up in the air like this. And he says, I can't find my body. I can't find my body. I can't find my body. He kept repeating this over and over again. But he was alive. You see? But he had a form of hysteria and he was not really aware of what he was doing. He thought he was in a dream. And the other one was moaning on the ground saying that he had back trouble. He said, my back is killing me. So I got an ambulance, the people were taken away, and they all lived. And the woman got some beautiful bridge work, and I had to go into court afterward to testify in the case. And uh, the woman looked twice as good when I saw her in court as she did when she was in the accident. <laughs> I'll tell you that. So they do patch these cases up. But I wanted to point this out to you because the significant thing here was he kept saying, I cannot find my body. And uh, now, if he had been killed, it's very possible that he could have been running around there doing the very same thing, I can't find my body. Because there was a disconnection of consciousness and yet there was an awareness that he was himself. He knew that he was himself, but he couldn't find his body. Now this is the way sometimes people feel when they pass through transition. Several years ago, one of the great masters spoke through me and founded what is known as the Order of the golden lily. This was a spiritual order whose purposes were to have a group of people on the earth plane who would serve and work with accident victims and try to establish some contact with the higher powers of light and assist these beings in getting out of the atmosphere of earth and getting free of what we will call uh, being earth bound. Now, this may seem relatively unimportant to you at this moment because you're very much alive. But if you can apply it to yourself, this is a mighty good insurance policy for the whole human race. If there is a group of people with enough love and devotion to go ahead and think of you after you're gone, as a rule, you know, once you're gone, I mean, you become no more than a statistic and they begin engraving your headstone and they start figuring out how what they're going to do with your insurance money and uh, life becomes really uh, 
very uninteresting as far as you're concerned. You're just out of the picture. And you're soon forgotten whether you think you will be or not. I mean, I'm always amused when I read obituary. They say the loving mother in memory of so-and-so. Because this lasts for a short time, and I have seen it in undertaking parlors where the heirs, including the family, were fighting over their mother's coffin. Over the money already yet. And this is true. So what we really ought to be interested in is not insurance policies alone of a mundane nature to provide for our family, but we ought to be concerned with spiritual insurance policies, which the masters are, that will provide not only for other people, but for ourselves, that someone is going to take some interest. Now, Elizabeth and I, together with the staff here, do just this kind of work with a lot of our members. We haven't lost many of our members. I'm thankful for that. We've had only a few people that have died in the Summit Lighthouse, and of those, a uh, few of them have ascended. And uh, I was able, fortunately, to assist in a few ascensions. We had an ascension service for one gentleman, during which time he made his ascension during the service. Now, this is a very important activity. And whereas people like to think that they can guarantee their immortality, in reality, there is nothing more important as a guarantee to survival and to adjustment to the other side of life than to have a group of people that understand these laws working for you. Would you like to place your life in the hands of some clergyman who merely says over your remains, dust to dust, ashes to ashes? Or do you want someone that's living and in contact with the masters that work on these interdimensional planes to work for you and work to see that you do get taken care of? And that's something that we do with our members. I mean, we work for each member if they notify us by telegraph or by letter, the members of their family, and we do take care of our members after they have passed, which is a very, very important thing at any age because people never know. And we work with the masters on this, and uh, we work to do everything within our power to bring about the comfort of the passing one as well as the remaining people. And I know there's people here that can testify to the truth of this. I think then that today when we're thinking about the resurrection, we also ought to recognize that either we're going to ascend or we're going to have another embodiment. It's like the old story that was told about the man who was going overseas. He was real worried about it and a nervous soldier, he was shaking all over. And so a fellow came up to him and he said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, either you're going to go to POE and go overseas or you won't. It's just two things. And he said, well, that's true. And he says, if you get overseas, he said, either you're going to go to the front line or you won't go to the front line. It's only two things. And he said, even if you go to the front line, he said, either you're going to get killed or you won't get killed. It's only two things. And he said, and even if you get killed, you still have two chances. <laughs> So you see, the thing boils down to that, that you have two chances and uh, you're either going to ascend or you're going the other route. And if you should go the other route and you miss it this time and you come back, you certainly don't want to be earthbound. You don't want to fall prey to the, any of the denizens of the astral realm. And if you don't think that there are denizens there, I will remind you that most of you have had nightmares at some time in your life. And they are most unpleasant experiences. And I'm telling you right now that nightmares occur when your emotional body, free from the physical body, gets entangled in the psychic or the astral. And that is what is happening to you. Now, only a master or an advanced soul under the direction of a master knows how to cut you free from that type of entanglement once you're out of the body. And in the higher work of the Keepers of the Flame, some of which is not even written yet, as well as the work of the Summit, we are providing for this type of service as well as telling you how to live now. So when we say that we try to work for the whole man, we mean just that. And it is a very, very important thing because anyone that understands the astral and understands the psyche and understands the spiritual levels of consciousness knows that no one should in their right mind want to remain bound in the astral realm. 
I'll tell you something of what you'll find in the astral realm, in the psychic realm. You will find Chinese opium smokers who are out of the body and have their body somewhere in China laid down in an old shed on a pad and they're out there floating around in the astral realm. And if you take a good look at them, you don't want to associate with them. You wouldn't have them in your house here. They came to your door, you'd close the door in a hurry and lock it and call the police. But they can easily get a hold of people when they're in the astral realm, and I'm not just kidding you. And they are not, in all cases, going to be benign in their activity. Sometimes these people have a great deal of experience in the astral realm. In fact, they live in the astral more than they do in the physical, and that's why they smoke opium, because they cannot face physical reality, and they live in the astral. There you will find the tools of black magicians. You will find vampire activity. You will find witchcraft. You will find all kinds of things that your pastors in some of the churches may tell you do not exist. Well, don't fool yourself. They exist here on this earth today among the living, and they certainly do exist there. Now, I'm not trying to throw any fear into anybody. I'm trying to tell you today that you need to take preventative measures to protect yourself. And the way to do it is to have the guidance of a master of light from on high. I don't care whether you select Jesus or Master Moria or Archangel Michael or who you tie to. You should have one master specifically that you should affinitize with. You should call to him daily. You should make every attempt to become a friend to that master. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You know very well that even if you wanted to, you couldn't shake hand in a whole lifetime with all the people on this earth, let alone a small portion of them. And so I was given a great revelation on life waves, which I'm not going to explain to you, but it's a tremendous thing. It shows the affinities of life and how that people circulate in certain orbits and how they came forth from the great central sun. And it shows how that life is compartmented and a caravan of light moves on and a caravan of being and people stay together life after life with the same people many times. So you have to realize that there is a tremendous activity that you can do to protect yourself by making friends with a, an advanced soul, a very advanced being. You can take one of these masters, this is within the cosmic law, and you can make special calls to that master that you affinitize with. This is called making friends with the masters. The masters are very busy. Don't fool yourself on that. They have a lot of people calling to them. And if you never call to them and you never establish that rapport, where are you? Now I'm going to show you something right now. Mother Mary, of course, is called to by Catholics all over the world. And they have a prayer that they use to establish an affinity with her. The only trouble is that a lot of the people that use it use it insincerely and repeat it not as a mantra of power to draw her radiance, but they repeat it by rote. And this is what is wrong with decreeing by rote, praying by rote, or doing anything by rote. Actually, of course, if you do a thing by rote with a sincere purpose, eventually you can establish yourself by rote to the point where your subconscious being will take over the prayer and after a while it gets to be a very real mantra of power and you can actually draw the light through that mantra whether or not you realize it at first. But you have to be sincere in order to do this. In other words, even if you were not particularly sincere as far as the decree you were making, in other words, you couldn't put all the thought and feeling you wanted to into it, but you're sincere in your heart that you want to be able to, by just doing the rote over and over and over and intentionally creating sincerity within yourself, you can actually establish sincerity. Do you understand me what I'm talking about? You have to be sincere because it's like me deciding I'm going to walk up to Alaska. If I decide I'm going to do that, to take all those footsteps, I have to be sincere. And if you're going to make a prayer 3,000 times a day or 6,000 times a day or 12,000 times a day, you have to be pretty sincere, don't you? Right? Well, that's the thing I'm talking about. But, however, by road is not the actual way to do it. You should seek to establish a rapport with the cosmic being. Now, if you take one of these beings and you establish friendship with them, in other words, like this. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. You see what they're doing? They're trying to establish a rapport with Mary. Mary's brought a lot of people through. She's pulled all kinds of people through. 
But she's not the only one to whom you should call. Actually, it's understandable that heaven should like to be diversified a little bit. Wouldn't it be an awful thing to have everybody call to one being? I'm glad, and I'm sure the masters are too, that some people call to Moria, some to St. Germain, some to Mother Mary, as their special guru. And the masters take you under their wing and they guide you. Now there is a fallacious school of thought in the world that tries to make the statement that you cannot have an ascended master for your guru, that you have to have a living master of flesh and blood. This is absolutely false. And I asked the party one time that told me this, I said, are you trying to tell me that my master Moria L is not living? Well, he thought he could tell me that. But when I asked him if he thought the Lord Jesus was not living, he backed up on that one. He said, no, he's living. You see, so actually when you boil it all down to common sense, these great beings are very real and they're very much alive and they can be your guru. You, of course, have heard it said that when the student is ready, the master will appear. So just remember that you can do an awful lot to bring about that appearance by readying yourself for that appearance when the student is ready. But the student has to make himself ready. The master isn't going to ready the student. After all, the bride has to buy her own dowry and get herself dressed up and put on her finery and prepare to meet her husband. He doesn't even see her many times until they get to the church. So don't you suppose that when we're trying to reunite with our higher self that we have some preparation to make? Now then, to finish up on this thing about death, I want to tell you that there are many octaves through which an individual can pass. And the most desirable thing of all is to just rip right through like a rocket, right through these astral realms and psychic realms and get right into the octaves of light. I visited, and I told some of you about it before, several years ago I visited out of the body in a special etheric realm that was prepared for the little children who pass through transition at a very early age. Naturally, these little children can't be taken right back into embodiment very easily. Sometimes they have a waiting period of many, many years or decades. And of course, life has to be guided by the karmic record and the opportunities for birth. The karmic board has to select a special pattern that fits that life stream. And as far as UNIVAC and IBM and all these organizations, heaven has its own system, but it doesn't make any error. When your card comes up, you go down into the channels of birth, but it has to come up. So in the meantime, you're somewhere. You can't be nowhere in the universe and have life, and you do have eternal life because you have a soul, and the soul is immortal. So I visited this realm, and what I saw was so beautiful. It reminded me almost of a fantastic land because it, it was actually a land floating in the clouds, and it was a little city. And they had a house mother and father in every, it looked like a little army barracks, only they were cottages. And the children had what looked like Elysian fields to play in. The fields were so beautiful, the little rolling hills and knolls, and as far as you could see, there were beautiful clouds there, and the children were running and playing in the field and playing with garlands of flowers and dancing, and they all wore little wooden shoes. They had little Dutch shoes on, and they had a cobblestone walk. And the houses looked like something that Walt Disney would create here on this earth. And this was just, just a beautiful thing. And you know, they even have a dinner bell. And they ring this bell and the children come trooping in from the fields. And they have little trundle beds that they put the children in. And this situation is handled so beautifully on the inner that no parent would ever grieve too, too long over their child if they were able to see the wonderful life that those children have provided for them, and this is true, this is real. The children are actually passed through a period of indoctrination where they're given counseling and they're talked to in a manner they can understand. They're put under the house mother and father and they have their little gatherings around the fire in the evening. They have both twilight and uh, they have everything that we have here on earth. They try to make the environment very beautiful. It's very much like... Uh, well, you remember Tinkerbell the fairy? You remember that little story? Uh, what's the name of that story now? Uh, Peter Pan, Mary Martin played in. 
Well, actually, it's very much like Peter Pan, only there's no pirates or bad people in it, no characters, nothing miserable. Everything is on a very high level of beauty. This is an etheric city, and there are many of them to receive these beautiful little souls as they come up. And uh, after they're there so many years, when the time for birth comes, rebirth again, they're taken to another place, and they're given special training in preparation for birth. And in regard to the unspoken question from the audience, do they age, they do not age there. They remain the same age that they were when they go there. You understand? I mean, they stay just steady. If they're eight years old, they stay eight years old because there's no purpose in running through an aging cycle. And so they don't start it because then they wouldn't be children. So I want you all to understand that we are safer in the hands of God if we can get through the astral belt that is actually a replica of the earth modes intensified by the human viciousness of human thought and feeling. In other words, once we pass through the psychic belt and get into the higher reaches, then the purposes of Eden are served. Their life is beautiful. The miserable portions of life all exist on the earth planet itself and in the astral level. These are the things that we should shun. And this is why our work is important, because it not only frees you today, but it frees you for a time that is approaching for everyone from the moment they're born. The moment they're born, they begin to deteriorate to a degree unless they can uh, renew their life eternally. This is possible to a certain degree. Some of you are probably aware of Shiva Puri Baba, the Indian who uh, lived to be 139 in one body. However, the average life cycle should be 144 years. But this is not usually, of course, accomplished, but only half of that and sometimes less. But Shiva Puri Baba at 90 looked as young as Michael Wilson with his black beard. And he had a beard like that and snapping brown eyes. At 90, he looked that young and he had that kind of a face. At 120, he looked like a man of about 55. But when he was 137, and I have his picture here, when he was 137, just the day before he died, he was photographed and his hair was snow white, his cheeks were sunken in, and his eyes were fixed on God. You could see that he was already behind the veil in thought. So then, we see that the mysteries of life are compounded very much and they're very intricate and yet truth is stranger than fiction. But fear is one of the things that causes people to tremble because we always fear the unknown. We need not, of course, fear the unknown. But the argument that men always advance is, well, no one has ever gone there and come back. This is ridiculous. We've all been there and we have soul memory and some of us can remember. I could tell you some very interesting stories from my own life. I don't wish to take up your time. I think we should get on now with a, sing a song, one song. Then we will have the meditation music for the keeper of the flame dictation by the unknown master. I hope that you have received some benefit from our dissertation this afternoon. Uh, I will play a song here that they didn't have it on this lecture, but you can see that you know he has total grasp of of uh, esoteric knowledge and the ascended master knowledge. And I want to add one other thing that um, in the heart center movement, if somebody does pass on in the movement, we we do many types of prayers, and um, one of them is to cut the soul free from the physical body. And uh, we also, um, if the soul um, is qualified for the ascension, they have what is called an ascension service for them. And it's a very powerful service, a very joyous service, full of light. And um, 
It's a wonderful service. Uh, to have David also um, as the messenger, he will give the insights of what the masters are wanting to get through or say about the, the soul. So Mark uh, has a wonderful voice, and I play his music all the time. Ava likes it. Um, Ava, do you know the song that you want me to play for everybody? Um, let me uh, let me let's give you a couple of choices. Um, deep in my heart, how great thou art. Um, come, blessed light. That's the one I thought you liked. Okay, come, blessed light. So uh, sit back and enjoy this voice. I hum a sacred tone to thee, beloved God so fair. I see thy light descending through the hallowed air. The radiance of thy shining now falls like gentle rain. Oh no, my heart is pining to be thy son again. Um, blessed light, never failing bright, Come, blessed love, stream forth tonight. Always enfold me, by grace now hold me. Keep me close to thee, by obedience free. Come, blessed light, come. Come and sing a song to me, O great Redeemer mine. Come an anthem to the free, the clasp of arms divine. Oh, draw me near by love and fold, my being to thy own, thy life renewed within me, for error does atone. Come, blessed light, never failing bright. Come, blessed love, stream forth tonight. Always enfold me, by God's grace now hold me, keep me close to thee, in obedience free, come, blessed light, come. The rainbow of thy promise now gleams upon the air. My life is lifted into light. I see thee everywhere. No shadow closes round me. For everywhere I go, thy presence 
once walks within me, making me to know and be that I am always one with Thee. Come, blessed light, never failing bright, come, blessed love, stream forth tonight, always enfold me, by grace now hold me, keep me close to Thee, in obedience free, come, blessed light, come. So, that is Beloved Lanello, Mark L. Prophet, Ascended, Master, who is the primary sponsoring master of the Heart Center Movement. That he came to David and uh, said, I'm going to give you 33 messages and present it to the um, Summit Lighthouse as as your, um, what do you call that when you apply for a job? Um, as your resume. And um, unfortunately, David presented it to this one person on the board who was absolutely close to anybody else but mother. And... Um, that's why the Heart Center had to start a whole new um, movement by themselves, separate. But Mark has a beautiful voice. I love singing along with him. Ava listens to me, uh, kind of like singing in the shower. If nobody's here, I'll, I'll belt it out, too, um, pretty loud. Uh, it was an interesting... That wasn't the one. You like that one. There was another song you liked better, right, Ava? You don't know. Well, she doesn't know. She has her favorite songs. There's uh, um, Anne Thy Radiance, Goddess of Light, Beloved Himalaya, My Wonderful One, Great Divine Director. That's one of my favorite ones. Dear Silent Watcher, um, The First Noel, Birthday of a King. I think you like this one. I'll play a little bit. No, somebody else playing the piano, I think. I can hear her voice in there. camera on you. Everybody wants to know what you're talking about. Well, we have a lot of um, uh, Mark songs here. We I downloaded every single one I could get, and I sing along with him, and 
I'm sure, you know, he's coaching me on how to sing. <laughs> so um, any questions about uh, Mark's talk at all, uh, what he was talking about, transition? And uh, Boris, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll hold on just a minute. It's a great topic. So basically we have soul, we have the spirit, and we have the body. Uh, and when it's time for our, our soul to leave the body, basically, um, it's, it's, it needs a lot of support, as he was saying. Uh, it's, if you have lived a very pure life, uh, it will be very easy. You're going to have a lot of angels that will come and help you out to go through that astral plane where it's like really dark and a lot of low level spirits lurk so you can go really quickly to the you know to the light where it's like very safe and beautiful and all that uh, so it, you can be able to be graced by some of your past uh, like people that have passed before you and they can be helped but mostly angels are the ones that are going to help you and during that transition time uh, there's a whole uh, many prayers that the master has given for the disciples to say to for the, the, the past disciple. And there are many psalms that you can say. So that's really uh, helping the soul to evolve and to reach uh, to the next level, reach to the other side, basically. Uh, the first 40 days, the, the soul can still be on earth and can be visiting different places on earth when she lived. And basically, it's the soul starts to expand quite a bit and eventually after the, the, all, all those 40 days the soul will become as big literally as the universe that's how big our soul is it's like really expanding in a huge way um, and and that's a very interesting thing because we say this in the penny rhythm also you know the soul is, is, is so we have a heart is as pure as a crystal, a mind as bright as the sun, a soul as vast as the universe. So basically, literally, our soul becomes as vast as the universe when we leave the body. It becomes really, because the, the goal of the soul is towards uh, um, infinity. Infinity, that means like no end, like really total expansion. And the goal of the spirit is towards eternity. That's like timelessness. So there's two different principles. You know, the spirits uh, up, uh, that we're part of that spirit, the spark, uh, it's always there, and we're part of that, and that, that gives us basically the ideas and the thoughts and the sparks, and the soul is the one that actually captures those and relates it to our physical plane, the body, and then we can respond back and send it back to the soul, and so it's, it's basically back and forth. It's like a, a, the soul is instrument of the spirit in a way. So it's a very, very powerful tool that w we, we use, but basically we're eternal souls for, for our whole life. Um, and it's, and it's, uh, as we're practicing different songs, we're connecting to higher level spirits and, and uh, archangels and ascended masters and uh, powers. There's many, many hierarchies in the invisible. Um, so it's important, the song. So singing is very, very important and beautiful. So I'm glad he, he's doing it. Uh, even though you, you're, not, you're not perfect, uh, doesn't need to be perfect. You know, just do the best you can and you get better. You know, the, the, the people from ideal society, they're beautiful singers. They like voices like incredible, but they train for a long time. And, and actually, the higher octave you can reach, the higher you can get, you know, into the invisible. So we want to try to sink in the higher octave <laughs> as possible. Like that, we were saying the Claire Prophet, she was able to reach the higher octaves. Yes, yeah, she was a very good singer herself. So that means you're quite spiritually evolved. The, 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 the more beautiful you sing, you can see how <laughs> more spiritually you get there. You got that reflects in your voice. In the Mexican tradition, when somebody passes, they do the rosary. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, how long do they do the rosary for, Eva? Nine days, she said. Nine days. A novena. No. In Espanol, it's called a 
Novena. Novena. Mm-hmm. And nine, number nine is harvest, basically. Uh, you know, one is uh, the seed, like the, the beginning, and two, three, four, five, and nine is the harvest. So if you're in a year of nine, that means uh, if you have sown good seeds, you're going to harvest a lot, but you haven't sown anything, it can be like the worst year ever. So nine is, is, is a very tricky number. It can be very good, amazingly good, or it can be the worst year ever if you haven't sown anything before that. So you have to be careful with nine, <laughs> depending on what your past has been. Well, with that, let's just close the service. Um, and I have some a special dessert lined up. And I think we'll warm up some tea. Um, we have a new tea to share. God bless you, everybody online. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your love and your joy and your wisdom with us and all mankind. Continue as we walk forward. Our f- children and our children's children will all have an easier path than the one that we have to walk right now. And I thank my ancestors, and I thank Mark Prophet and Elizabeth Clare Prophet and and the great ones that came before that laid the foundations of the teachings and the path of back to the light and the higher understanding of how it actually works. Um, The great master of truth, Ben Saduno, Yogananda, thank you Archangel Michael for helping us all. Thank you beloved Mother Mary. I know that um, by doing the rosary every day you establish that heart tie. And Mark was making a point that when we do it we say it with feeling. And don't, he said rote is when you just say it like, you know, you're trying to just get it done or whatever you're not really interested in connecting to her heart or if you're praying to Jesus pray to his heart say it from your heart say it with meaning and power and not and those heart ties those ties of light are eternal and they will help in any kind of situation of leaving your body or any kind of um, need that you have, the stronger your heart tie is with your master, the quicker they answer the prayer. So with that, Boris, do you mind uh, blowing out the candle and closing this session? Beloved Mother, Father, Jesus, Mother Mary, O Ascended Masters and Angels and Archangels, thank you for your presence, thank you for always being with us and protecting us, thank you for giving us open heart and love and light in our minds. Thank you for inspiring us for beautiful actions for the world and humanity. We're grateful. We love you. Amen. God bless you, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. Uh, We will be doing the um, Mother Mary's Rosary. Please join us if you have time. God bless you, and good night.